So ladies and gentlemen, the word is out. And I really truly believe the Red Cross reputation is completely damaged and they will not bounce back from this. Use caution when donating to Red Cross for hurricane relief. And you ever notice the Red Cross never pop up to do anything for a single community across this country. Even if there's no hurricane going on, there's a lot of people in need in this country, just in general. And they are just not there at all. More than 160 million in donations just from U.S. corporations have poured into Texas since Hurricane Harvey. Or you may wonder where's your $50 will go the furthest. It's probably not with the Red Cross. I know the Red Cross is the preferred charity during major catastrophes. That's because we have been conditioned into believing that is the best source for charity, but it really truly isn't. Now, from what I understand, they collected over $500 million just for the um, disaster in Haiti. And you see, they did absolutely nothing for Haiti, nothing. And granted, it's one of the biggest charities providing humanitarian relief for natural disasters, which also make it one of the biggest targets for criticism. The Red Cross has not helped one single person through a disaster. I don't know if they ever did, to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, now that I think back, I don't know if they ever did. We know that during Hurricane Katrina, they did nothing but collect a whole bunch of money. I believe they collected over 200 million during Hurricane Katrina and 500 million uh, from the earthquake in Haiti. And so far, Texas said nobody has showed up there from the Red Cross, but they're steady collecting money from all of these disasters. I think now the name Red Cross is toxic. I, everybody's hip to what they're doing now. Um, ProPublica, a nonprofit investigation journalism group reported multiple times since 2014 on the many failings of the Red Cross following disasters such as Hurricane Sandy, I can tell you they didn't do nothing for one single New Jersey resident or New York for Hurricane Sandy. And there were quite a few people that lost their homes. In fact, all around the shoreline of New Jersey, all of those homes were lost and not one. Very few of them were rebuilt. Very few. Those homes are gone. And Hurricane Isaac and 2012 earthquake relief in Haiti. Now they collected $500 million for Haiti and only six homes got built and they offered zero relief to the people there. Many of them are living in makeshift uh, shacks, tents, because they never got back into a home ever. and floods in Louisiana in 2016. The ProPublica investigation all seem to draw the same ugly conclusion. There's something inherently worse about the Red Cross than other smaller relief groups. There's a lot of public relations show from the Red Cross instead of a lot of actual relief on the ground in these past disasters, according to ProPublica. And you know what, like I said, now that I think back, even as a child, when I would hear about hurricane striking areas, I never turned on my TV and seen the Red Cross out there 
helping a, a community through a disaster. I don't even recall it then. And it just go to show you that we were blind to this for many, many decades that this organization has done literally nothing but take money and go use that money for all other things and not help one single person. Okay. If you haven't read the ProPublica investigative reports from 2014 and 2015, well, they are scathing. Their deep investigation include a trove of internal documents provided by the Red Cross itself, which were also damning. After Hurricane Sandy, for example, there was the deployment of 40% of emergency response vehicles to non-critical areas in order to make them visible during press conferences on Long Island. So the Red Cross, in other words, they come around disastrous areas for show just to make it look like their presence is really doing something when it's not doing nothing at all. After Hurricane Isaac, a Red Cross uh, truck driver reported being told to drive around the affected areas, um, especially to give the appearance of activity, but with no participation mission beyond public relations. Unbelievable. There was the deployment of volunteers into the post-Sandy disaster who themselves were not fit enough to accomplish physically demanding tasks. In Haiti, ProPublica reported that, uh, reported in 2015, the Red Cross raised a half a billion dollars, that's $500 million, to build housing after a uh, devastating earthquake, but only six houses ever got built. $500 million, a half a billion dollars was raised for Haiti. And those people on the island are still struggling to this day. Less systematically, but still indicating ham handedness that uh, was the truck full of pork lunches delivered to the Jewish retirement community high rise in New Jersey after Sandy. Now I thought Jews weren't supposed to eat pork. There, I'm just saying that just go to show you how fake they are. Uh, you know what? I also read, I think 40% of the population over in Israel eat pork. So these people are full of shit. One of the recurring arguments in the ongoing aftermath of reporting on the Red Cross and other relief charities is what percentage of an annual budget get dedicated to programs, the actual relief effort delivery versus overhead or organizational uh, costs. The Red Cross says 91% of its 2.7 billion in 2016 went to programs with only 9% dedicated to overhead. And that figure represents its typical spending in other areas as well. The nonprofit reporting group, Charity Navigator, gives the Red Cross a respectable three out of four stars on their scale for a combination of financial efficiency as well as transparency. Well, that's the problem. It's not transparent. They collect all this money and nobody knows what's going on with this money. But one thing we do know, no one's being helped. ProPublica itself challenges that 9% overhead figures. However, site subcontracting relief work to other organizations, which tack on their own administrative overhead costs and thus obscuring the numbers. Isn't that all they do in this society? You know, when it comes down to the population side, they love playing around with numbers and figures. 
to give you the illusion of something that don't exist. And you can see the Red Cross do the same exact thing, playing around with the numbers to make it look like they're doing something, but they're actually not doing anything at all. The larger point may not be arguing over the precise level of overhead costs is appropriate for what organization or what mission. Reasonable people could agree on these issues. The larger point is probably whether they fulfill a need, a needed role at a crucial time better than anyone else. No, no, they don't. And maybe for a high profile organization like the Red Cross, the key is whether they respond to past criticism by improving their delivery of services in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. I can tell you, no Red Cross representative have showed up for Harvey. And the people in Texas can tell you this themselves. Not one representative have showed up down there in Texas. Just like here, Hurricane Sandy, they just came around for show, but did nothing to help one single person in New York and New Jersey through Hurricane Sandy. Okay. Do they arguably succeed in providing the best relief instead of the best public relations effort? Time will tell. I don't even think that all public relation efforts are bad. In the past few weeks, we've all watched elected public officials and other high profile personalities, uh, personalities suspiciously help in front of the cameras during post Harvey relief. And this help is an obvious public relation ploy and also an important show of societal solidarity. Healing includes seeing our leaders see the pain and chaos directly and believing that some level of our leaders get it. The problem is too many people want to go around these victims and play instead of really help. It's really all about them and not putting the focus on the people that are really hurting out here. And I got a problem with that. We accept a certain amount of show to go along with the actual work from government leaders. With a non-governmental relief group like the Red Cross, however, maybe we expect a high ratio of actual help to the public relations show, since their role is less a, sim a symbol of our collective society and more about just delivering results. I don't know exactly what's fair. Well, no, no, they need to be delivering results. If you're collecting $100 million to help earthquake victims and you haven't given off even a million dollars, I bet you they didn't even pay a million dollars to have those homes built, those six that they had built in Haiti, okay? So they're, they're squandering all of the money and they keep expecting the public to just throw money at them. Now that they realize nobody wants to give them money, they're calling people. They got people at every major store and mall and location around the country trying to bilk money out of people and, and folks don't woke up. And they're saying, no, no, I'll give it to anybody but you. When I dropped a few bucks in the collection bowl at my CrossFit gym to help send a fellow gym buddy with his food truck to the Texas coast to provide hot meals, I expected a certain um, amateurish ap approach producing a limit impact with our limited resources. If I elect to send money to a huge professional organization like the Red Cross, I expect an almost um, mir uh, militaristic deployment efficiently solving huge needs with their vast resources. Right now, given all the immediate needs, all help is appreciated without an over overly critical eye 
on efficiency. But as the post-Harvey recovery um, stretches into months and then years, we'll need an assessment of which large groups delivered best on their promises of disaster relief. It's probably too early to assess just two weeks after Hurricane Harvey passed through the region to know which organization made the biggest impact and which organizations did not. A natural question we will want to keep asking ourselves, however, is who helped the most with our dollars so that we know who to support now and in the future. And that just go to show you, it's not just us, but really people across the board notice that the Red Cross is really just for show and they are pocketing all the money and people are not being helped. So they're now begging people for help that they really don't deserve at all. They don't deserve this at all. I will post a link to this article in the description box and I will also ask um, that you all give donations for um, hurricane relief. Uh, I will have the link there and this is for Hurricane Irma victims in the state of Florida and, and that's really the state where I have family. And I know in their communities, there are people that are, some of them are underprivileged and may be in need of all types of supplies to get back on their feet. So I would like, if you can, uh, make a donation. Some of you already have, and I deeply appreciate it, but we're going to need more <laughs> in order to really make an impact down there when we go. So please leave your comment and subscribe. And if you can donate, please do. Peace, family.